this video, Scene Sequel Writing History and Notes Part 2, is a follow-up to this video. Scene Sequel Writing History and Notes, January 19th, 2023, about 14 months ago. Uh, I talked about, among other things, this book right in the first video and in this one. Writing magazine fiction. Now the front the cover, the spine, says it's written by Walter S. Campbell. And this says Stanley Vestal, in parentheses, Director, Courses in Professional Writing, University of Oklahoma. There's a list of books by Stanley Vestal. This is like Samuel Clemens and Mark Twain. Same person, two different names. They already had these books published. Fandango, Kit Carson. Some fiction, some nonfiction. Book titled Professional Writing. And this one titled Writing Magazine Fiction. It was published in 1940. Vestal, or Campbell, uh, had been writing for a number of years, and there's his content <coughs> to this book. Uh, magazine fiction, characterization, the scene, the plot, setting, basic techniques, types, short story. Now, these are published in magazines, uh, novelette, complete novel, serial, short story type, choice of a type, and then marketing. Uh, again, published in 1940, he, uh, Campbell here became uh, leader of the, uh, or director of the professional writing program in 1938 at OU. <coughs> magazines were the outlet. Hardbacks was the alternative. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> there were a lot fewer hardbacks and a lot more magazines. Now, it says, like, the complete novel in parentheses, there were, uh, not long after, well, in the, at the time this was published, uh, magazine, Pulp Fiction, like The Shadow, Doc Savage, uh, even some uh, Perry Mason. There would be a 60 to 75,000 word novel in a magazine, and there would be other short stories in there. Uh, mainly short, most of these though had short stories. And in here, um, so here's chapter three, the scene of scene and sequel. And here, the scene. The scene is a unit of plot of dramatic action. It has nothing to do with scenery. It is made up of dramatic action and dialogue, like a play-by-play -play account of a prize fight or a ball game. I'll come back to that another time. This is Dwight Swain, Tricks and Techniques of the Selling Writer. This is the book jacket. This manual offers beginning writers up-to-date information on how to write fiction, especially for magazines. Published in 1965, the market still was mostly for short stories or short nonfiction pieces in magazines. The solid information in this book is intended for people who want to sell fiction, not just talk and study about it. In a real sense, this manual is the nat natural successor to writing magazine fiction and writing advice and devices since Dwight V. Swain studied and worked with 
W.S. Campbell, author of those two classics in the field of fiction writing. This is John Franklin's Writing for Story, published in 1986. Craft Secrets of Dramatic Nonfiction by a two-time Pulitzer Prize winner. Um, Franklin uh, gives acknowledgments. This uh, paperback was 94, but a copyright and was first published is 86. A new school. Sorry about that. The new school for writers, his first chapter. Samuel Clemens, dozens of others have one thing in common. They learned their craft by writing short stories. Only when they had mastered that form did they undertake the long trek of the novel. The short story in its heyday was the universal school for writers. Now he goes over how there's not really as much market now. Uh, they've gone out of business. And people have, such as Truman Capote, started using fiction techniques in nonfiction. And that's what he did with In Cold Blood. In 1978, having grown comfortable with the new nonfiction story form, I felt comfortable enough to begin telling stories sorry, with real dramatic impact. Um, so we'll talk a little later about the story he wrote that received a Pulitzer Prize. He was a two-time Pulitzer Prize winner. Very respected, uh, John Franklin. And so what he explains he's doing here is uh, applying the techniques of writing the short story to writing nonfiction short pieces, nonfiction feature stories. Now, <laughs> I don't know that I ever met Stanley Vestal, my aunt introduced me to Dwight Swain. Uh, I don't remember which bookstore. This is my aunt. This picture was taken in 1966, and she owned this bookstore. And if you can read this sign. Help Fight TV Commercialism by a Book. My hat did not own a television. Uh, she wanted people to read. She moved next door. That was 116, this 117. Reed named her store Carter's Old Books and uh, bought, sold, traded. She had a long career as a bookseller in Oklahoma City. And I was there as much as I could. Uh, if there is a heaven uh, for me, I will return to Carter's old books. I think having lived a long life, uh, I was that's where I was happiest. She asked me to take over her bookstore. And at the time, I wasn't interested in operating a bookstore, I was interested in writing, but uh, when my aunt introduced me to Dwight Swain, he had come in the bookstore, he was a routine customer, and she said, uh, this is my nephew, Robbie. Um, he's going to be a writer. 
and we shook hands and he, I was young and started asking me questions about the uh, point of view. And I, and I didn't know what he was talking about, but I learned. I think he wanted me to go to OU and be in his program, but my life took a different direction. Um, the techniques that are in these two books about writing short stories, I believe um, I exchanged messages with John Franklin for more than 30 years, but I never asked him. I presume he's uh, definitely, he says he read books published in the 1930s and 1940s about short stories. Now, I believe he must have read this one because uh, the Stanley Vestal Walter S. Campbell book on writing magazine fiction because his book, Writing for Story, is very similar in many aspects to this one written in the 1930s and published in 1940. All three of these men in interviews say their books are basically their course syllabus and many course materials. So I adapted it for a bigger audience than just the students in their classrooms. John Franklin says in his book, Writing for Story, I went back and read how to write books from the 30s and 40s, discovered complication resolution form and the essential form of the short story of old. I vowed <clears throat> to use that form to give shape to my newspaper stories. Within two years, I was writing true short stories complete with complications and resolution stories as one puzzled newspaper edit editor put it with beginnings, middles, and ends. Now, uh, Franklin goes on to explain that most, you know, it's a different format. Inverted pyramid journalism is different than writing the feature story. Uh, inverted pyramid journalism, you have the big information up front in your story. Uh, the Super Bowl was won by a field goal uh, in the last part of the game. So there'd be details. Now, the feature story would say something, begin something like uh, when he was 14, uh, he was stuck for a summer uh, working uh, on a farm and he had nothing except a football to play with. He taught himself kicking, and 25 years later, won the Super Bowl. This is the story of how it happened. Franklin says most journalism, most journalism headlines in particular, are endings without beginnings. Feature stories include the beginnings, as does short stories and good novels. Now, I just showed you out of the 1940 Campbell Vestal book uh, about the prize fight. Uh, Dwight Swain compares scenes to a prize fighter stepping into the ring. The bell rings and the fight begins. There is no escape for the fighter until the bell rings again. And this author, author of Mastering Scene and Sequel uh, says, that she, I suspect she has no knowledge or awareness of uh, Stanley Vestal, Walter S. Campbell's earlier books, which say exactly the same thing. Uh, it's, it wasn't new with Swain. Swain did make one thing that was new. He divided the five-part uh, 
sequence that uh, had been accepted for scene sequel writing into six. Goal, conflict, disaster, reaction, dilemma, decision. Then you repeat that. Goal, conflict, disaster, reaction, dilemma, decision. You can outline, and many, many successful novelists have outlined their entire book in this format, and then they write it. They make changes as seems uh, to serve their artistic needs. Now, here's what John Franklin did. Uh, he changes the uh, the six into passages of transition. Uh, his first part uh, to uh, for the writer to write for the reader, you need a passage of transition so that readers are oriented to the new position. So it uh, you go into the main character's mind, main character of your story. And for example, so the readers see the characters move from where they were, were in transition, to where they, he wants them to be, and that is in front of the fireplace. And then, dilemma, decision. Passages of preparation. The reader shares the character's emotional and thinking experiences. And here the reader sees the shotgun over the fireplace that you started standing in front of in the passages of transition. Goal conflict. Now, in my own outlines, I use plan instead of goal. Uh, passages of climax. Climax of thought climax of action. The readers see the shotgun used. That's action. Here is uh, what uh, Campbell writes in his 1940, the complete formula for the scene, meeting of the two forces, purpose or intention, Encounter, which contain these possible elements. Final action, win, lose, or quit, and sequel. Now, he goes on elsewhere to say sequel, final action, final state of mind. Fi no, final state of affairs, and final state of mind. So... The need for the scene, remember, like a prize fight or a ball game. And later in the series, I, I'm going to write a short story about, nonfiction short story about a ball game. <clears throat> so then Franklin goes on and adapts this to, uh, to his work. So then in Franklin's writing for story, chapter on structuring the rough, he says transitional narrative. You have to provide the reader with some transitional narrative. Then you go on to provide the reader preparatory narrative. Preparatory narrative generally follows transitional narrative. There are times when you, everything has an exception, but uh, as a rule of thumb with these patterns of plot, then you go on to what he calls climactic narrative. He uses three by five cards. I have tried that. I still do sometimes. It's all good. So, 
passages of transition, passages of preparation, passages of climax. These correspond to what Dwight Swain calls disaster and reaction, dilemma, decision, and goal or plan and conflict. So you can outline your whole story this way, whether a short story or a complete novel. This is to serve the reader. That's what these purposes that Swain calls disaster and reaction, they're transition. What Swain calls dilemma decision, Franklin calls passages of preparation, and goal and conflict, passages of climax. Conflicts may be short, but it's what it's all leading up to. So he has a different pattern containing the same things of scene and sequel. Okay, the plot is in service to the story of your leading character. This is something both Dwight Swain talked to me about and John Franklin writes about. It's very important to get the right character as the focus character of your story. In this uh, story that he won the Pulitzer Prize for called Mrs. Kelly's Monster. Mrs. Kelly has a tumor in her brain and a brain surgeon is gonna to try to remove it without killing her. <clears throat> Franklin explains that originally uh, it was a patient story and he outlined it that way. And when he outlined it, the purpose of outlining, is, Eisenhower talked about this. He said, basically plans are worthless, but planning is essential. It forces you to think through what you're doing. Uh, and uh, that's what this outlines do. Scene sequel outlining. Anyway, Franklin changed it, which made the difference. He, he thought to the from a story that would have been just another story to the story that uh, garnered him the Pulitzer Prize, to the brain surgeon's story. And here is his basic outline, complication, the surgeon's name is Dr. Ducker, brain surgeon. Development, as he tells the story. This is how he's going to tell it. The surgery begins. Ducker enters the brain. Ducker clips aneurysm. Monster ambushes Ducker. Ducker accepts defeat. Complication, development, resolution. Transitions, preparation, climax. Mrs. Kelly's monster. Mrs. Kelly was expected to survive. She died. Nobody believed she was going to die. Everybody was optimistic. Uh, Franklin, um, in an interview he gave later, for five hours after that, he thought he had no story. It was over. Then he went ahead and wrote it and realized he still had a story. And others <laughs> agreed, obviously, the Pulitzer Committee. So there's more than one way to outline. The key things, I think, uh, the whole point of the scene sequel complication and resolution, and key factor development. So scene sequel, <laughs> sure you've got the right character as your focus character, who you're writing about. Franklin changed from the patient story to the brain surgeon story, but he used the same factors. Now, if you, you know, you want it adapted to a, a television or streaming service or film, you've got to have your leading characters. It's good guys and bad guys. 
supporting characters, minor and function characters. Uh, you can have a bad guy as your leading character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, in my opinion, and that of many others. The best of the 22 films was the next to last, uh, Avengers Infinity War, where Thanos wins. The bad guy wins. The good guys lose. Terrific story. And a lot of the credit for that should go to the original source material written by Jim Starlin. He doesn't uh, seem to get enough credit, at least that, that I've seen. Anyway, uh, the uh, scene sequel form uh, is discernible in most good commercial writing, whether fiction or nonfiction, even in uh, non-print domains. Um, although they have some different rules, of course, uh, adapting to film or television. But uh, the basic writing, there's this is an outline for a writer, and then an outline for the reader. Disaster, reaction, dilemma, decision, plan, and conflict. 